about the Eid al-Fitr. So we have the two big festivals. Uh, one corresponds with the annual pilgrimage, the Hajj in Mecca. The other um, is another major part of the Islamic calendar. And all of them have increasingly, uh, are entirely dependent on moon sighting. Yes. And they depend on the lunar calendar. Now, off late, what has happened is since the new government has taken over, which I think is only progressive on paper, but one possible symptom of that governance is that the Minister for Science and Technology, even it is for the sake of being a contrarian, has put on a very interesting argument. Earlier, what used to happen was that the moon would be sighted by a committee and the, and the job was of this, the annual job or the biannual job of that committee was just to sight the moon. That would essentially be a bunch of, I'm, I'm not mocking them, but relatively older uh, male clerics surrounding a telescope on one of the high rises in different cities and, you know, waiting for testimonies of moon sighting. And that testimony is going to decide whether the country is going to celebrate the festival or not. So the new Minister for Science and Technology has said that we don't need that committee anymore since we can predict the moon sighting way well in advance. And every time now the two Eids when they happened this year, it seemed like a tug of war. That, you know, you had these old people sitting on the telescope and this minister continuously tweeting. <laughs> You know, this is going to happen. This is going to happen. So how do you see this? Both the comedy of it. Do you think this is productive? Do you think <laughs> it's going to lead us anywhere? Uh, you have two and a half minutes right now. Or okay. we can carry on in the next session. As, okay. as you I think, well, let's see. I'll start. And we'll see if I run out of time and have to continue. Um, I mean, to me, it's so beautiful. It's so great because it's, it is the intersection of these rituals and traditions that are many centuries old and real astronomy. And uh, to me, it's not in conflict. I mean, if they want to do it that way and that's the ritual and that feels um, really meaningful, I mean, what's the difference, you know? Uh, but what's so amazing is that religion, all religions all over the world promise so, you know, there's such a, this concept of prophecy, right? This idea that, that through religion, we can predict the future. But with astronomy, in this case, you, it's literally prophecy and it's accurate. And it's like, you really will know when the moon cycles, you know, will be visible when it's full, when it's whatever it is. And, you know, of course, so many religions and so many traditions the calendars are linked to the phases of the moon. And that's so beautiful and so uniquely earthling, you know? And it's, I think that that's really wonderful. And, and that's something where, you know, belief and science intersect. And, it, you know, we have this rock that, that orbits us and it's really important to us and it's really special and it's really beautiful. And when it's full, it feels, sacred, you know? And I think there's something about that that is great. I mean, this is a, to me, this is a story of two things not being in, I mean, I understand that there's the conflict in the way it's being approached, but this is sort of the beautiful dovetailing of science and religion. And I think that, I don't know, I think my perspective, just having learned about this from you, let the guys go on the you know, roof of the building and look at the telescope, that's fine. But it's also spectacular that we do really know what the what the moon will do. And that is because we've followed the evidence of the scientific method. All right. Again, right on the money. 